Listen, with everything going on in the world right now, the last thing anybody wants to do is go to the doctors. And if you do have to go to the doctors, you would at least hope that they know what they're talking about and are, I don't know, qualified enough to give you an accurate diagnosis. Or at least not be dramatically wrong. I mean, come on. This is the hospital, not a game of guess who, disease edition. Well, what's happened to you guys? I'm your host for this one, Landon Do Not Sing. And I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan. And just letting you guys know of a brand new channel, we react to scary content. Make sure you guys click the link down below, Top 10 Central Dark, and we're gonna show you guys a trailer right now. I don't know, I don't trust- What is he looking at? <laughs> what is, okay, what is- <laughs> Squirrel in my life. It feels like my heart's gonna explode. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed the trailer for that. That looked absolutely scary. If you guys are into scary stuff, oh, well, you guys are, right? You guys are into this channel. You guys wanna see us react to scary stuff, make sure you check out Top 10 Central Dark. Well, without further ado, let's get right into this one. Top 10 Scary Times, Doctors Were Wrong. Starting off at number 10 is the doctor who discharged a patient who was literally in the middle of having a stroke. The patient came in and was complaining of neck pain and a bad headache, and she was having a lot of trouble explaining her symptoms, which, you know, confusion and slurred speech is a common sign of strokes. But, you know, what do I know? I'm not a doctor. Anyways, the doctor examined her and under the pressure of the hospital to move people through quickly due to overcrowding, decided there weren't any worrying signs and sent her home. The next morning an ambulance arrived at the hospital with a female who was having a heart attack. She ended up passing away and the doctor tearfully confronted the woman's children to admit that he should have asked for a CT scan. They forgave him and said that their mom said he was a good doctor. In my opinion, no, he's not a good doctor, sorry. Next up, number nine is a really tragic story. One doctor was preparing to make a chemotherapy treatment for one of his child patients, but didn't check the solution ahead of time and saw that it was mixed 20 times stronger than it was supposed to be. Is this real life right now? How would you mess up something like that? How do you make it so strong? Well, when the chemotherapy was administered, the high amounts of sodium chloride made the patient's brain swell and she ended up going into a coma. Big screw up. Three days later, she passed away. She was only two years old. Absolutely sad. The doctor was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. He spent six months in jail, six months on house arrest, three months probation, a $5,000 fine, 400 hours of community service, and he also lost his license. But something tells me that this doctor is gonna be able to pay that fine off no problem, and house arrest? I mean, what is house arrest? I think this doctor got off pretty easy. And our eighth spot today is a doctor who didn't care enough to come in to see an elderly patient whose condition was time sensitive. An 85 year old woman came into a hospital late one night with a bowel obstruction. And over time, it was clear the pain was increasing. The attending nurse knew that she needed emergency surgery because these obstructions can be deadly. She called the doctor and he said it could wait until the morning. Within five hours, she called the doctor three more times. Each time, the doctor getting more irritated with her and told her it can wait. The next morning, the patient died. Apparently, no autopsy was ever ordered, and the doctor filled out the paperwork as if he did everything right. Number seven goes to the time a doctor operated on the entirely wrong patient. Apparently, the two patients had very similar names, and one of them wasn't supposed to have any type of surgery. Imagine showing up to the hospital, you're supposed to get a needle, and all of a sudden that needle sedated you, and you wake up and you just had surgery. But when the nurse came in and told the patient it's time for the procedure, the nurse didn't listen to the patient when she said she wasn't told about a surgery. The mix-up was discovered only after the surgery had begun. Luckily, the patient recovered fully, but I can only imagine what sort of mix-ups are possible if this one ended up slipping through the cracks like it did. Next up, number six is those 20-ish years 
when doctors used to actually recommend smoking. Apparently back in the 1930s to the 1950s, tobacco companies actually used to pay doctors and physicians to perpetrate the idea that smoking was healthy and that it was an effective cure for throat irritation. They were even given cigarette ads in medical journals and pictures of doctors smoking were pretty common as well. And for the record, smoking isn't healthy, it causes cancer, so say no to smoking. Don't do it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the time a doctor almost killed a man by removing his breathing tube too early. The doctor thought that the man was fine and could be moved to another unit. But as soon as he removed the tube, the man started having difficulty breathing. The man had severe swelling in his throat, which somehow the doctor didn't know about. He had to reinsert the tube, but first accidentally put it in the wrong part of his throat, and then almost took too long to put it back in properly. The man could have suffered severe brain damage, but by some miracle, he didn't. That doctor needs to be fired, and I hope he is. <laughs> I don't know. Coming in at number four, we have a doctor who tried to speed up a patient's labor by giving her oxytocin. I'm not sure if that is or was a common thing to do, but in this situation, it ended up putting the fetus into distress, and the couple's first child ended up suffering severe brain damage and cerebral palsy. The fetal distress wasn't even recognized before it was too late, because at the time, there weren't any systems in place to measure for it. Now, thankfully, there are. Next at number three is a doctor who amputated the wrong leg of a patient. The patient had crashed his car into a tree and crushed his legs. His right leg was salvageable, but his left leg was not and needed to be amputated. I'm sure you know where this story is going. The x-ray tech had mislabeled the films and the wrong leg ended up being amputated. I guess both legs ended up being amputated actually, seeing as the left one wasn't salvageable to begin with. That sucks, imagine going there and then leaving with no leg? You're supposed to leave with at least a, one leg, mm -hmm. and now you're no legs, mm -hmm. but you're left with one big lawsuit now. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> sue them. I <laughs> hope they win a lot of money, but even if you win like 50 million, your mm -hmm. life is just totally different. All right, almost done now. Number two was when a pregnant lady went in during her first trimester, complaining of a lot of nausea and vomiting that left her severely dehydrated and with low potassium. A nurse accidentally administered too much potassium via the IV, and within an hour, the patient had passed away, along with her unborn child. I feel like doctors and nurses should know how much of a dosage that they should be giving people of various conditions. Conditions, I get so angry when I hear cases like this because I feel like they can be so easily avoidable These people shouldn't be dying You're going to doctors to try to prolong your life to try to become healthier and now you hear stories like this And in our number one spot we have a doctor who made a deadly misdiagnosis <laughs> One young woman came into their office and had a bunch of weird symptoms. She ended up getting dismissed with doctors claiming it was just a psychological issue like depression or anxiety, which in my opinion should have gotten her a referral, not just a full dismissal. But the real issue was a lot more severe than doctors realized. The patient had lung cancer, but by the time it was discovered, it was too late. It had spread throughout her body and she passed away at the age of 37. Well, there you guys have it. That was the top 10 scary times doctors were wrong. And I just don't understand any of these stories, how they can mess up. No, especially when doctors go through so much schooling, you would think that they would know by then. Yeah. But no. I was about to say, like they do like what, seven years minimum, 10 years of schooling? That's crazy. Are these doctors cheating through their tests? I think so. <laughs> I think so, honestly. <laughs> All right, well, there you guys have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to check out our brand new channel, Top 10 Central Dark. I was your host for this one, Landon Do Not Sing. And I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. <laughs> <laughs> there was one video we filmed, I can't remember who it was. I think it was, uh, I don't know who was in it. But they're like, oh, uh, we have separation. And then the, the editor, I guess, didn't remove. It like so it just looks like, oh, we're separated. But oh. it's like, uh, you guys are f***ing <laughs> touching. To like. <laughs> <laughs> the new channel, Top 10 Central... What's it called? <laughs> Dark. Dark. Central Dark. <laughs> I was going to say Top 10 Central Scary. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, that looks like a good channel. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, okay. <laughs> So is there an extra point here? I think there is. Next at number three is a doctor who, who oh my god, I can't speak. Three. Four. And then five five. Five five. five, five. So this is I will I'll see you guys. See you when I see you. <laughs> Sorry, go, go. Oh, was it? I, you kind of paused. I know, I know. I was like, I was gonna say something because I gotta do my little catch. Yeah, you do your thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs>